2024 race for the White House is officially underway. Former President Donald Trump launching his presidential campaign at Mar-a-Lago, his home last night after months of speculation. Griff Jenkins got the lucky job of being posted in Palm Beach, Florida on this wet day here in New York City. Hey, Griff. Well, just to rub it in a little bit, it's 71 degrees here, uh -huh. clear skies, headed for a high of 84 and nothing but sunshine. But I digress. Steve Ainsley, Brian, good morning. It's official. President, former President Trump announcing for the third time he will run for president. If elected, he would be only the second U.S. president in history to get elected to non-consecutive terms. Here was the crux of that major announcement. Take a listen. In order to make America great and glorious again, I am tonight announcing my candidacy for President of the United States. America's comeback starts right now. I am running because I believe the world has not yet seen the true glory of what this nation can be. This campaign will be for you. He spoke for just under 64 minutes and addressed issues like crime, education, and wanting to overhaul the DOJ and FBI. And no surprise here, he took a shot at President Biden. Listen. I will ensure that Joe Biden does not receive four more years in 2020. Our country could not take that. And I say that not in laughter. I say that in tears. Our country could not take four more years. It can only take so much. Biden reacted with a pretty pointed tweet simply saying, quote, Donald Trump failed America. Meanwhile, that wasn't the only event in Florida. Over in Orlando, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis addressing the Republican Governor Association's winter meeting coming off the heels of that landslide victory last week. And DeSantis was asked about Trump's comments and criticism last week. Here is how he answered that question. Listen. When you're do when you're leading, when you're getting getting things done, yeah, you take incoming fire. That's just the nature of it. All that's just noise. And really, what matters is: Are you leading? Are you getting in front of issues? Uh, are you delivering results for people? And are you standing up for folks? And if you do that, then none of that stuff matters. So former President Trump, first out of the gate, we'll see if Ron DeSantis or others join what will probably be a crowded primary field. We're two years out. But as we look at who may be on uh, Trump's team, Brooke Singman, our colleague, got an exclusive interview with Ivanka Trump, the president's daughter, who said, I love my father, but I don't plan to be involved in politics this time. Brian Angel and Steve, we'll send it uh, back to you. All right, Griff, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, Ivanka said that she wants to spend time with her family and is going to sit it out, but she loves her Private family life. and her dad. Yeah. No word about Jared, though. Uh, Jared played a key role in almost every aspect, much to the chagrin of Kellyanne Conway, understand, but mm -hmm. uh, they'd be very interesting. I thought it was a valuable I ally. Thought I saw Jared in the crowd last night. I know the family was there, but right. I don't know. I saw Barrett in the crowd because he's so tall, and I thought I saw Jared there. But it sounds like, based on what she's saying, they want to be there to support the dad and go to all these events, mm -hmm. but they're not going to be involved in the politics, not right. going to work in the White House if he wins. Eric and uh, Don Jr. will be very much involved. But he seems. runs the business, so he can't be, I don't know if he can have a job at that, the White House. That's a good point, but I think he can be, can he, I think he'd be involved in the campaign. I think I could see him doing our show exactly and like other shows. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's see um, how it all shakes out. The, the, I think one it, there's so much stuff here. Where do you where do you start? It's 721 days before uh, November 5th, 2024. So he is throwing his hat in early. There were so many Republicans who said, please, Mr. President, don't announce before Georgia is settled, because right now uh, it is it can be 50 50. If the Republicans win Georgia, then it would be 50-50. But if the Republicans lose Georgia, then they lose that 50-50 that split. There won't be the power sharing, and that means the Democrats uh, can subpoena anybody they want without Republican approval. So a 50-50 power sharing thing is really good, but President Trump decided, you know what, I'm gonna go before Georgia, and uh, let's see if that has any well, impact. He did talk about Herschel Walker and said, please support Herschel Walker. If you live in Georgia, go to the polls and vote for him. Would it really matter, though? I know everyone was yes. saying, wait until after Georgia is settled. But everyone, 
either suspected Donald Trump was going to run or be involved or sure. go and campaign for but, him. So. But, Ainsley, how many people after the midterms blame Donald Trump for having some sort of influence in the candidates uh, and ultimately the losses? But right. he was going to have some influence in Georgia, even if he were, were not running for president. Yeah, Here, so why here's not the just deal. wait three weeks? Here's the deal. Uh, I thought it was very pointed. It was very right to the point. The, the big difference about now in 2016 is many. But one is he does have a lot of accomplishments. Almost everything that mm -hmm. he ticked off, some of them were reminding me, and we do this every day, what he was actually able to accomplish in that short time. And if you read Mike Pence's book, which he was able to get through a few hundred pages last night, you see on what he was able to do with the headwinds that were against him, almost all of it was made up with this dumb, ridiculous, distracting Russia investigation and people not accepting that he actually won the presidency in 2016, the act like in 2020 was the first time everyone ever ever objected to the presidency. But I thought he stayed to the prompter, stayed right to it, uh, went after, uh, packed house, created excitement. Uh, it looked like Melania, who they were saying six months ago was telling him, don't get involved. She looked happy to be there last night, so that's important. So he's going to see what kind of team he can get together. And I think it's going to be a horse race all the way through. I think Ron DeSantis played it perfect. Ron DeSantis not engaging personally. He did doesn't want to look like he... Uh, at all wants to engage in something he hasn't even said he was committed to doing. Right now, he wants to be Florida governor. So why argue with the guy that helped him become Florida governor until he makes that decision to get in? And saying when Donald Trump called him a name, he said it was just noise. Um, but Donald Trump last night said he wants to fix education, that schools will lose their federal funding if they push CRT and gender insanity. He said he wants to rehire every member of the military that was fired for not getting the COVID vaccine and apologize to them and give them back pay. He said he wants to change election laws, demanding voter ID, same day voting and only the paper ballots. Right. right. He said he wants to finish the wall and he said he's running on a national greatness agenda. Uh, there for a second, we put up a, a slide of the potential people who could run for president. Uh, as you can see, um, you got Mike Pence, our guest this morning, DeSantis, Youngkin, Larry Hogan, Asa Hutchison, Tim Scott, Mike Pompeo, Nikki Haley, Chris Christie. Uh, look for them, if, if they do get in, look for them to get in probably in late 2023. I mean, why get in too early and then just have, uh, you know, the back and forth, which we would assume because Donald Trump, we've mm -hmm. seen the way he operates. Most of the candidates will get in before the end of next summer. Right. Wouldn't you say? Because you got to stay. Right. You got to staff. You got to get the best people. You also got to let uh, donors know that, if, for example, if you're Glenn Youngkin, hey, if you're going to support me, I'm going to get in. If not, Glenn, if you're not going to get in, I'm going to give my money to Donald Trump or Chris Christie or Ron DeSantis. Uh, you know, in the past, Nikki Haley has said, I'm not going to get in if Trump gets in. People say, Christy, no, I'm not going to get in if Trump gets in. You wonder if President Trump shows vulnerability if they change their mind. Mike Pompeo said, I haven't made a decision yet. But you wonder if he's going to get in if Trump gets in, if he's vulnerable. Uh, so that would be that would be it. If you can't win without the Trump base, but the Trump base is not enough to win. So the question is, who, who out there can get Democrats and independents to listen to them and make them think that they can govern the whole country, not just the 40 percent of, uh, of Republicans? Right. And, and Brian, you were exactly right. You know, one of the reasons we thought early on and Donald Trump used to come on this show uh, we thought that he could get elected was there were so many independents who said that's a really good message and sitting here in New York City there were so many Democrats who would come up to me and come up to both of you as well I'm sure and say I'm a Democrat I'm gonna vote for Donald Trump that was in 2016 how many uh, people will from the Democrat Party vote for Donald Trump now how many independents we know that he's got a core of supporters ardent supporters the question is how many? And you can make it through the primary, but can you win in a general? Kellyanne Conway was on primetime last night with Jesse and had this observation about Mr. Trump and Governor DeSantis. Watch. They have the same agenda, same record of accomplishments. I mean, one in a state, one for a whole country. But they are both, DeSantis and Trump are both on the front lines for freedom. They are both stewards of, of freedom, of lower taxes, of fewer regulations, of border security, of of national security. And, you know, the existential threat in 2024, I, I'm not going to give in to the media and uh, the Democrats trying to fracture the Republican Party. When Jesse Waters, we should all be focused on the one person we know for sure who's running for president who should not, Joe Biden. And I'll throw Kamala Harris in there. 
This guy has beclowned our country. He has embarrassed us again and again. I don't care about the election results last week that does, when it goes to Biden. That doesn't change anything about the poor record he has. You see that 76 years old, Donald Trump, 76 years old right now, Donald Trump and even Bernie Sanders, a lot more energy than Joe Biden, who couldn't get through a whole day yesterday. Uh, one thing about no one really, uh, no one discounts Donald Trump's engine. All right. So look who's coming on our show today. Mike Pence just wrote this book that Brian got through 100 pages of last night. I didn't get mine till this morning. So I you're have to it. read it. Did you really? Good. Yeah. So I can make it's, my notes. on it. It's called it. It So Help Me God. And we're interviewing him today. Uh, and he was interviewed by Brett Baer. And he Brett Baer said, would you vote for Donald Trump? And he said, I think there will be better choices. Meeting we'll him. talk to him about that. Exactly. We're wondering if he's going to run. Uh, it's uh, it's crazy because a lot of the people that were all on the same side are now breaking up their right. own factions. Right. Uh, meanwhile, 14 minutes after the hour coming up. Life changes. Yes. There are seasons. Right. I believe there's a song like that. Uh